Once upon a time, there was a girl who was locked up in a tower. Her name was Rapunzel. Every year on her birthday, she saw out of her tower window that the sky filled up with thousands of mysterious floating lights that shone like stars, and she wished that one day she would be able to leave the tower to see them. But until then, we all know how to keep busy while being stuck inside. You can bake, stretch, do ballet, play guitar, make a pie, read a book, or maybe two or three, and wonder when your life will begin. And since she loves painting, I'll show you some incredible paint-themed makeup products that I found, and show you how to transform into Rapunzel. fellow quarantine queens and welcome back to my channel I know I haven't posted videos for quite a while now so thank you so much for all your patience and a big hello to all my new subscribers as well and I thought the perfect tutorial to start with which pretty much sums up the last few months and what's happening in the world is Rapunzel because most of us apart from all of you amazing people who were through it thank you so much to all of you have been Rapunzel stuck in a tower and I mean she is literally the princess of Corona that is the actual name of Rapunzel Rapunzel's kingdom. So how have you been managing through all this? Did you keep yourself as busy as Rapunzel or were you more like Anna talking to the pictures on the walls or conceal don't feel like Elsa? Personally, even though I probably did talk to the pictures on the walls a couple of times, I was definitely more Rapunzel. I did a lot of courses and learning new things to do with YouTube and filmmaking. And I also did some soul searching, which I'm going to talk about a bit later in the tutorial. I'm going to be completely honest and open up about a few things. And I thought since Rapunzel loves her activities, I thought it'd be really fun to do a tangle quiz throughout this video to test your knowledge and to keep you busy, so get pen and paper ready. So I'm just applying some moisturizer for that to soak into my skin while I do my eyes. And the look that I'm going for is as screen accurate as possible to the movie. Uh, and I'm also going to use a few different techniques such as Japanese makeup tricks to get her big eyed animated look without needing a filter. I might have gone a little bit overboard makeup shopping while I was being stuck inside. Um, so I have a lot of new makeup products to show you. And one of them is the P. Louise eyeshadow base. I read up so much about it online. So many people were praising it a lot. So I thought I'd check if it was worth the hype. Because what do you want from an eyeshadow base? You want the eyeshadow that is in the palette. You want that color on your eyes and not a horrible washed out version. You want it to last all day and you want it to not crease. That's right Disney boys and girls, dreams do come true. And you know when you have little eyebrow hairs that you forgot to pluck and they're trying to destroy your blending skills? This actually has quite a thick consistency which helps to stick them down. So like I said earlier, I bought some amazing paint themed makeup things and here is the first one. It is by Glamlight. You've probably seen some of their amazing, they're so creative with their palettes. They did a hamburger one and a pizza one and this is really amazing. I'm going to show you. I might as well hold it up while I'm showing you. Ta-da! Isn't it incredible? Ah, and look at these vibrant colors. I mean, they're so beautiful. And which of these exciting, colorful colors am I gonna be using? Brown. 
But before adding the amazing vibrant brown color I'll be using later, I'm going to start off with using a pale eyeshadow below my eyebrows. That will just help blend the eyeshadow later and it will also give a visual lift to the eyebrows. And then I'm going to be using this Bobbi Brown Smoky Eyeliner Brush. It's got a really thin precise brush. It's good for under the eyes as well. And I'm going to draw a new crease above my natural one. So I'm going to apply it in quite a rounded shape. It's good to start at the middle and then fade it out inwards and outwards. So what this will do is that it will give an extra lift to the eye and if you have hooded eyes like mine for example and have a really low crease it just helps to make your eyes look a bit bigger and a bit fresher and I like to kind of use this technique anyway if I'm doing eyeshadow. You just take a smudging brush and fade it upwards. Then using an eyeshadow brush I just take off some of the color and adding layer by layer. I don't want it too strong because her makeup is pretty natural really. One thing that is great to do during lockdown is to try new makeup looks because if it doesn't work out it's not like you have to go anywhere anyway. So if you've been looking to experiment with colors then this palette will definitely bring out the artist in you. Then I'm going to use the P. Louise primer again but one shade lighter than before which is 0 0.5 and I'm going to redefine the crease. And then I'm using the pale eyeshadow that I used below my eyebrows just here on my on my lid. And then I'm going to just take some brown and apply it to the outer corners. I think it's about time to start the quiz. And the rules are that you get one point for every question you get correct. And I'm going to reveal the answers at the end of the tutorial. Do let me know in the comments how well you do or how badly you do. And also the second la second to last question is really hard, at least I think so. So do let me know if you that do get that one because I'll be well impressed. And the first question is, drum roll. Which of these activities does Rapunzel not do according to the song, When Will My Life Begin? Is it A, play the violin, B, read books or C candle making. So if you look at pictures of Rapunzel you will see that she has a very thick upper lash line and I will be using thick lashes later on but until then to make sure that we achieve the effect I'm going to be using Inglot gel eyeliner to do a thick line. And now I'm just going to do a little flick here to make my eyes look wider and a line going a bit down. All the techniques I'm going to be doing now, including this line, is to get that doe-eyed, big-eyed look that she has. And the next question is, what is the symbol of Rapunzel's kingdom? Is it A, a crown, B, the sun, or C, a flower? Next step is to add pale eyeliner on the inner and outer corner of the eyes. And for this, I'll be using the automatic highlighter pencil by Note. I'm adding it to the inner and outer corner of the waterline to get your to make your eyes look more open. It's basically a visual trick to make the eyeball appear larger. Then a light pink below the eyes. I'm using NYX Inner Eye Brightener in linen. Then I'm using a dark brown gel eyeliner to draw a line below my lower lash line. I'm going to draw this quite thinly and I don't go all the way up here. I kind of start a little bit further down because that kind of leaves your eyes a bit more open in the corners. And then I just follow the line up to the, completely under the, below the lashes and just follow the lashes all the way to the end. Going back to the brown eyeshadow and the smoky eyeliner brush again and just slightly smudge the line. You want to take off a little bit of the color because you don't want it to be really severe. It's just to kind of smoke the liner out a bit. And now I'm actually going to be able to use another color from the palette. I'm going to be using this white one so not one of the color ones colorful ones still but you know it's something quite cool because you're actually able to hold it like a palette while you're doing your makeup 
And I'm going to add this shimmery white just in the corner of the eyes, just to open them a little bit more. And also a touch on the pink below the eyes. Then a bit of the brown again. And I'm going to go below the pink where your eye bags are. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. Make sure you take off a lot of color because you don't want a big brown line under your eye bag. But you just want to put a little bit of shadow. And this is actually a Japanese makeup trick to make your eyes look bigger. Because they love a bit of that sweet big eyed anime look and you would be surprised that actually exaggerating your eye bag is a thing but it actually does make a difference it does make your eyes look cuter and more open i think I, but it actually strange enough makes sense to exaggerate your under eye bags because i just remember the first time i ever did makeup on myself well the first time i applied concealer under my eyes and of course it didn't help that I, it was more or less white uh, but one thing that I noticed was how small your eyes goes when you put concealer. So when you put the eyeshadow to exaggerate your bags again, it kind of does open them up quite a bit. I feel like I put on a little bit too much and I'm just gonna take some off with a cotton bud. Because it's just supposed to look like a shadow, not really much of a line. Just a touch of powder. So again, like I used the light color to extend my eyeball, I'm going to use a green eyeliner to extend my iris, which are lenses by Oma Kitty for you. But like always, all the products I'm using and the costumes, wigs, everything is in the description. And I always go a little bit in with a cotton bud just to blend it because I don't want it to be too harsh. I'm talking about green. Here is the next question. What is the name of Rapunzel's sidekick chameleon? Is it A. Pierre? Is it B. Pascal? Or C. Perry? And by the way, this is such a good prop to have if you're doing a Rapunzel Disney bound or cosplay because all you do is that you have this magnetic pillow underneath and then it just snaps onto your shoulder. Here's the instructions. I think he's really accurate as well to the movie then i look to the side and curl the outer corners of my lashes and the reason why i'm only doing the outer corners is because i don't want it to lift too much in the front i just want to have the lift and at the end all about some mascara and the lashes i'll be using are these i can't remember the name right now but i'm going to add the name in the description I'm adding some mascara to my bottom lashes and for my under lashes which will also help to get really big eyes are these Pa Dolly Love lashes. I cut them into three bits to make them easier to apply because when you apply them and you don't cut them up they have a tendency to lift up which is really annoying. So, like I mentioned earlier, I did a lot of soul searching, which I think a lot of people did during lockdown, as when you step off the daily treadmill, you have time to think about things. And there is the physical tower, but there is also an emotional tower you can get stuck in. And I kind of realized that I want to talk more to the camera and be more myself because when I had time to think about things I realized that there's definitely things hanging on still from having a past or being bullied and I realized that life is just too short to hold yourself back and not live life to the fullest. So I'm ready to come out of my tower and be myself 100% and I really hope that if there's anyone watching who has felt the same in any way that you know that you don't have to hold yourself back. Should it be a hidden talent, a part of your personality, uh, your sexuality or even a hobby? Because trust me, once you open up about yourself, you will find your people. There's so many people you will have this in common with, but you will only find them once you open about it. It's kind of like being a butterfly and not flying because your wings are different instead of just spreading your wings and flying and living your uniqueness is what makes you beautiful and seen and what will inspire other people so don't hide yourself or any part of you in that tower 
leave your tower and leave the nagging mother gothel voice in your head behind you think she's there to protect you from being hurt but what she's really doing is holding you back take a risk but anyway enough of that let's get to the next question in the quiz so fill in the blank flower gleam and glow let your blank shine so fill in the blank in other words um, what is the answer is it a magic b power or c hair so i've just finished priming off camera and i'm now going to use the full coverage foundation to erase all my features so that i can create new ones where i need them to be for a rapunzel and talking about facial features here's the next question which of these flynn rider facial features do they always get wrong in the wanted posters is it a ears b chin or c nose so i'm using the darkest color from the note contouring palette here just below my cheekbones where it goes in a little bit and then i draw this shape so I'm also placing it here under my jaw to make it more defined. I also like to apply some onto my neck just to make them a bit more narrow. I started doing it for one tutorial, on Jasmine tutorial actually because she had, has a really narrow neck. And I actually think that it works a bit better with princesses when you're doing a bit more of a cartoony look. Or maybe I just have a really wide neck. I don't know. Then I'm getting this middle color and just doing a few streaks. But if you already have a heart shaped or a diamond face shape, then obviously you don't have to do this. But if your face is round like mine or square, then I would recommend doing this step. It looks really weird right now, but it will look normal eventually. Just using the edge of the beauty blender to blend the edges. So now that it's all blended, it definitely doesn't look as weird anymore. It just kind of places the shadows in the right places so that you look, yeah, a bit more something like that. <laughs> and another feature that Rapunzel has is that she has a very low hairline. And I've seen a lot of cosplayers when they do a character who has this, they pull their wig down to compensate. But that just doesn't look very natural. It just looks like you pulled your wig too far down. Uh, of course, if you have a very high hairline, you can pull it down a bit. And even I have pulled it down slightly a bit further than my hairline, but don't pull it down to like here, if you know what I mean. Instead, use contouring. And again, I'm gonna use the darkest color and I'm just gonna go over my hairline, but I'm not gonna do it properly. I have to do it off camera because I have my wig on. So when I do take my wig down, I'm going to have the dark going a little bit higher and blend the edges. So I'm now back from blending the contouring and as you can see, it definitely makes your forehead look smaller. Next thing I'm going to contour is my nose and for this I'm going to be using MAC Eyebrow Pencil in Fling because it's just a really good color for contouring and it's good for precision as well. Starting by making my nose look more narrow and to make sure it's straight, I take some foundation onto a brush and just wipe it down. And when I've seen pictures of her, it kind of looks like her nose is a bit of a triangle in the front. So I'm gonna draw a triangle. And then I'm shading around the triangle and a little bit across the nose. I'm using this little brush again. It's so handy, this little brush. It's so precise. It's from the Dingle Hopper set from Spectrum. And I'm filling in the tip of the nose using a highlighter. And I'm just using my finger just to slightly blend the edges. And before next step, what is Rapunzel's weapon of choice throughout the movie? Is it A, a frying pan, B, a bat, or C, a broom? 
So before the other freckles, I'm going to do another thing that is very distinctive to Rapunzel's look and that is her really flushed cheeks and for this I found this really amazing paint themed blush set by Glossier called Cloud Paint I only really found them because I was searching for paint themed makeup but I'm really happy that I did because the colors are so vibrant I might just end up buying the whole set but the colors that I got for Rapunzel was Dawn and Haze these, oh, one of them is pink and one of them is orange and her blush set is kind of be between those two since Rapunzel is quite an artist I am gonna mix it onto this obviously and I'm going to use two thirds pink and one third orange and then I'm applying it, concentrating it on the apples of the cheeks and then I'm blending it upwards and towards the nose and up to the side and while I'm doing this, what does Mother Gothel like to make for Rapunzel? is it A. hazelnut soup B. walnut cakes or C. peanut butter sandwiches I'm blending it almost all the way up to the eye you're just gonna build it until you're happy I'm gonna go in a little bit with a beauty blender as well and whatever color is left on the beauty blender I'm just going to dab a little bit across the nose as well and then for Rapunzel's freckles I'm going to be mixing white with brown from the wolf FX face of heart <laughs> I keep saying that. Draw on some more using the wall face fart. fart. <laughs> that was not very ladylike. Okay. <laughs> uh, stop saying fart. I'm mixing the brown and the white into a very watery mixture. And then I'm just dabbing it and I'm concentrating the freckles where the contouring is. To exaggerate it she doesn't have a lot of freckles everywhere it's very concentrated around the nose and then just maybe just a couple going up the nose and some here but not too far and then I'm blending it using a beauty blender then I'm gonna apply powder all over which will blend all the colors and all the freckles and everything together so I've been updating my brow kit and I'm really excited to show you my new favorite brow products I'm starting off with Urban Decay brow blade in brunette Betty and I'm using the soft side just to fill in my eyebrows it's a slightly lighter color than than my actual eyebrows but Rapunzel's eyebrows are lighter than mine and then I'm just drawing a little bit of an arch then I'm using the shade blackout to draw some extra eyebrow hairs because it has a really thin tip on the other side microblading style you could obviously use the other shade that I used to draw in the eyebrows but because my eyebrow hairs already are quite dark I need a darker shade otherwise it will just look out of place and I'm just using brunette Betty again underneath to connect the dots and then, why does Rapunzel want to leave the tower? Is it A, to find herself a boyfriend, B, to have a closer look at something that she saw out of her window, or C, to get away from Mother Gothel? Then I will go over with Glossier Boy Brow in shade Blonde, which is a pomade that both keeps the eyebrows in place and tints the eyebrows, making the eyebrows slightly lighter. Okay, so here comes the extra hard Rapunzel question. At least I think it's an extra hard question. Maybe it's common knowledge for all I know. So it's not an exact Tangle the movie question, but your overall Rapunzel knowledge. Rapunzel is a German story and Rapunzel means something in German. What is it? Is it A. Princess, B. A type of lettuce, or C. A type of flower? Do let me know in the comments if you did get that one because I'm really interested in knowing if anyone will. So her lips look quite thin in pictures where she's smiling, but if you look at any stills where her mouth is relaxed, they're actually quite full with a heavy upper lip. The color I found is the best match for her is Nude Suede Shoes by NYX 
and then we just brush and brush and brush our hair and wonder when our life will begin if you're buying an extremely long wig it will get tangled no pun intended and one product that really helped me out was the mane and tail detangler spray and that takes me to the last question which is can you guess how long the disney animators made rapunzel's hair was it a 30 feet slash 10 meters b 50 feet slash 15.2 meters or c 70 feet, 21.3 meters. Okay, and now for the quiz results. <clears throat> Which of these activities does Rapunzel not do according to the song When Will My Life Begin? And the answer is A, play the violin. She does indeed play an instrument but it is the guitar. And the next question was, what is the symbol of Rapunzel's kingdom? And if you didn't get this one right, I'm gonna be very surprised because the hints are literally everywhere. The answer is B, the sun. The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun. Oh, and by the way, this one is by, I bought this from Etsy it's really nice the next question was what is the name of Rapunzel's sidekick chameleon and the name is B Pascal then it was fill in the blank flower gleam and glow let your shine the answer was B power flower gleam and glow let your power shine and then in the question, which of Flynn Rider's facial features do they always get wrong on the wanted posters? The answer to that is C, nose. They get it wrong in all the posters and that really annoys them. And now let's practice our Flynn Rider smolder on three, two, one. Am I managing to lift one eyebrow? I'm not sure. I don't think I'm managing. Three, two, one. I'm not sure if I did a very good job on that, but I hope you did a good job. <laughs> and then, what is Rapunzel's weapon of choice throughout the movie? The answer to that is A, a frying pan. The next question was, what does Mother Gothel like to make for Rapunzel? And that is of course, A, hazelnut soup. Have any of you ever heard of or tried hazelnut soup before? I definitely would like to try it one time. Do let me know in the comments if you think I should. It's got parsnips in it and that's about all I know about it. Next question was why does Rapunzel want to leave the tower? And that was answer B to have a closer look at something she saw out her window which was the floating lights that comes out every year on her birthday that she really wants to have a closer look at. So the question that I was wondering if anyone actually did get was Rapunzel is a German story and Rapunzel means something in German. What is it? And the answer is B, a type of lettuce. Did any of you actually get that? And that might seem really random that Rapunzel means lettuce, but apparently in the original story, uh, there's a pregnant woman who really craves this certain type of lettuce that the husband goes and steals from the witch's garden. When the witch finds out, she has to make, she makes a deal with the husband that he will get lettuce, but in return, she wants the baby, which she calls Rapunzel's and hide up in the tower. Yeah, so very weird story. The last question is, can you guess how long Disney animators made Rapunzel's hair? And the question, and the answer to that is 70 feet, slash 21.3 meters and yes the animators actually made her hair 70 feet long and I'm reading this because I had some little bit of fun fact for you and they actually animated over a hundred thousand individual hair strands and had help by someone who had a PhD in hair which I didn't even know what was a thing <laughs> so that was all the answers to the quiz do let me know in the comments how well or how badly you did 
And if you managed to watch this all the way to the end, comment a secret code which is a paintbrush emoji or a paint palette emoji. Make sure you like this video and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.